If you're an astronomy enthusiast, November and December will be exciting months. That's because the biggest planet in the solar system will make its closest approach to Earth as it reaches its opposition. Besides that, the Moon will pass in front of the brightest planet, Venus, temporarily hiding it from view. And finally, the best meteor shower of the year will be at its peak and is expected to produce up to 150 meteors per hour under dark skies. Before we begin, make sure to download one of the space apps given in the description to locate the planets according to your place quickly. Let's begin with the opposition of Jupiter. A superior planet is said to be at opposition when the Earth comes between the planet and the Sun. From the viewpoint of Earth's surface, during opposition, the astronomical object rises in the east as the Sun sets in the west, placing it and the Sun on opposite sides of Earth. Jupiter's opposition occurs every 13 months, making the planet appear larger and brighter than any other time of the year. Since Jupiter, just like other planets, goes around the Sun in an elliptical orbit, its opposition does not always coincide with its closest approach. The gas giant will make its closest approach to Earth on the night of the 1st and 2nd November, when the distance between the Earth and Jupiter will be 370 million miles, or 595 million kilometers. That's one of the closest approaches to Earth in decades. Then, Jupiter will reach opposition on November 2nd through 3rd, bringing Jupiter opposite the Sun in our sky. Jupiter's last opposition was noteworthy, as the planet was at its closest to Earth in over 70 years, at 367 million miles. So Jupiter will be slightly further away this year, but that would hardly make an apparent difference. When a superior planet reaches its opposition, it rises in the east at sunset, reaches its highest point in the sky around midnight, and sets in the west at dawn. Jupiter will, therefore, shine brightly throughout the night, well up in the sky. It is the brightest planet in the sky after Venus, as seen from Earth. Since Venus is only visible in the morning or evening skies, Jupiter will be the brightest speck of light you'll see in the night sky. The gas giant has 92 confirmed moons orbiting it, and four of them can be easily seen through a modest telescope or a pair of binoculars. They are known as the Galilean moons, named after Galileo Galilei, who first discovered them in the 17th century. With good binoculars, the banding of Jupiter and three to four Galilean moons should be easily visible. To see Jupiter's great red spot and bands in more detail, a 4-inch or larger telescope and some filters in the green to blue range would enhance the visibility of these features. In binoculars or a telescope, the Galilean satellites should appear as bright dots on either side of Jupiter during opposition. An ideal viewing location will be at a high elevation in a dark and dry area. The view should be great for a few days before and after November 2nd, so it would be best if you took advantage of good weather on either side of this date to take in sight. If you look around in the night sky, you should be able to see Saturn. The ringed planet reached its opposition about a couple of months ago and is slightly fainted. Saturn rises before Jupiter before dusk and reaches its highest point in the southern sky about a couple of hours before midnight. It's fairly bright and can be easily seen with the naked eye. A telescopic view can reveal the beautiful rings of the planet. As far as the other naked eye planets are concerned, Mercury and Mars are still emerging from behind the Sun and will remain hidden in its glare in November. Venus rules the dawn and pre-dawn sky, outshining Jupiter when it rises about a few hours before sunrise. If you have clear skies and live in these parts of Europe, Western Russia, Greenland, or Africa, don't miss the rare celestial event of November 9th, the lunar occultation of Venus. The moon will pass in front of Venus, temporarily hiding the brightest planet from view. Sky gazers in these parts of the world have the opportunity to see this astronomical event, right from the disappearance to the reappearance of the planet. For the rest of the world, the two objects will appear extremely close, offering breathtaking pre-dawn views. Finally, the best meteor shower will be active from 3rd December to 17th of December, 
reaching its peak on the night of 13th to 14th December. The Geminid Meteor Shower is one of the most popular and reliable meteor showers of the year, and 2023 is expected to be a great year to see it. They are known for producing bright, fast-moving meteors. At its peak, the shower can produce up to 150 meteors per hour under ideal conditions. This year, the new moon will occur on 12th December, so there will be little to no moonlight to interfere with viewing. To see the Geminid Meteor Shower, find a dark location away from city lights, lie down on a blanket or reclining chair, and give your eyes about 20 minutes to adjust to the dark. The meteors can appear anywhere in the sky, but they will radiate from the constellation Gemini. The best time to watch is after midnight, when the radiant point is highest in the sky. So have a great time watching these events. Also, the latest close-up images of Pluto show something weird happening on the planet, and we may have made a mistake demoting it from the list of solar system planets. If you missed this episode, be sure to catch up on this exciting discovery.